Welcome back to the Astronomy Garage. I'm your host, Reflactor. Now, today I have a tale of two eyepieces. These happen to be 20 millimeter focal length eyepieces. Notice that they both have similar size glass, but that's where the similarities start to differ. Notice something significant? Yeah, they're different sizes. This one has a barrel that is 0 0.965 inches in diameter. That's just under one inch. This one has a barrel that is 1.25 inches, and that is the industry standard. Now, these little ones seem, well, a little bit odd if you've just gotten into astronomy because most new telescopes come with the industry standard. But if you were to buy a telescope that was made uh, up until the late 80s or early 90s, it would probably come with one of these 0.965 inch eyepieces. Now, there's nothing inherently bad about these. It's just that they come in a smaller package. So when you get into the higher magnification eyepieces, so the, the glass gets smaller and smaller, I find these become a little bit more cumbersome to use. So what I like to do is use, you know, a standard size eyepiece and somehow get it working with the older telescopes. Now, there's a couple of ways to do that. The first, of course, is to buy a commercial adapter. And it works pretty simply. You just put this in there, like that, tighten it down. And then you have this part, which just sticks in the vintage telescope. There's another way to do this as well. You can 3D print your own, which is what I did here. Now I went ahead and I designed this and I uploaded it to Thingiverse. If you want to use this, you can download it for free. I put a link down in the description box. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. It's pretty straightforward, and this one doesn't require any supports when it's printing, so it goes pretty quickly. Let me show you. I start my projects by taking measurements and creating a two-dimensional sketch. Then I use CAD software to rotate that sketch in three-dimensional space to create the part. Now, the world of 3D printing uses STL files, so my next step is to export this to an STL file. And then I switch over to the 3D printer slicing software, which imports that STL file, and it slices it into hundreds of little flat two-dimensional shapes, and I export that to the 3D printer, and voila. Here we see it printing. Um, it doesn't always work on the first try, but this one did eventually work. Now, my printer does add this little, what looks like a hat brim on the bottom, but that peels off really easily by hand. If you're enjoying this video, then please be sure to push that like button. And if you want to support the channel, check out my adventure science fiction series available on Amazon and Audible. First, let me show you the commercial version. This one has a, just a barrel loop tightener right there. And these are very simple, just a solid piece of metal. These cost, I think, between about $15 and $20 online. You can get them from several different sources. But here's the one that we 3D printed. Before you do anything, you do need to take some sandpaper and, and sort of sand off this lip right here because there is a little bead that typically builds up right there and it won't let this go in. But once you get that done, it should fit right in, just like that. Now, this hole, which is in the 3D printed model, is sized for a four millimeter tap, which is very common for tightening screws on eyepieces. And you just put it in there. This stuff is very easy to tap. In fact, you don't want to be too rough because it'll actually tear out. And I have a whole bag of these screws that I've collected over the years. These are basically knurled thumb screws. They're all four millimeter. I have this one, which is the perfect size. Put that right there. And the eyepiece just slides in and you can tighten it. Now, something kind of funny is if you take this, it just so happens that the 0 0.965 is the perfect size for my one inch Dobsonian. <laughs> I, I know it's not supposed to go there, but I found that kind of a, a, a funny thing. Anyway, we'll put this down here. Okay, so how does this go on a telescope? Well, let me show you. Here I have a vintage telescope. This is actually a real Bird Jones telescope. And this takes the 0 0.965 eyepieces. So it just literally goes in like that. And you can tighten it down. And then you can use any old modern day eyepiece and it works great. Oh, there is one thing. So I wanted to show you if you happen to have one of these and it's a four millimeter. I mean, look how small. Can you even see the, the glass? It's so small that these are very difficult to use. At least I find them very difficult to use. This is four millimeter. And in contrast, with inch and a quarter, you can get all kinds of wonderful eyepieces. Uh, this is an inch and a quarter. This is also a four millimeter. And you can see there's a massive difference in glass size. Now this is a special one. This is an 
AstroTech 4 millimeter. This is actually 82 degree uh, field of view. I'm actually probably gonna do a review on this eyepiece sometime, but that's not the purpose of this video. So I just wanted to show you, when these guys get into the high magnification, these lower numbers, uh, you know, six millimeter, four millimeter, they become almost unusable in my opinion. But you know what? If you use one of these adapters, you can use any of these standard eyepieces, including you can put one of these fancy 82 degree ones in there. It sure does make your vintage telescope a pretty powerful tool. There we go. It's installed in this classic Bird Jones telescope. Now, if you've never heard the crazy story behind how this Bird Jones telescope design came into being, well, go ahead and check out this documentary I made about it. And if you want to see me restore an old vintage telescope that uses these small eyepieces, well, go ahead and click on that video. But until next time, thank you for watching and clear skies, everybody.